I know I have a lot of pedals, but back in uh, 2003, I had just one. It was a, a, a looping pedal. And what that does is in a live setting, it allows you to record whatever you're playing, and then you can play it back over and over. And for many years, this uh, looping pedal was just a practice tool for me. It was a way to play along with somebody, myself, when I didn't have anybody else to play with, or else I didn't want to subject them to whatever I was working on, a chord change or a melody or a, a rhythm. So for many years, it remained that way, a practice tool. And once in a while, I'd add another pedal, and I would uh, start to experiment with changing, altering the way my fiddle sounded. But it wasn't until about six years later, in uh, 2009, that uh, something significant happened for me. And I was teaching at a fiddle camp, and uh, even there, word re reached us that Michael Jackson had died. I was to give a performance the following evening, and I figured a, a tribute was probably in order. And uh, in talking with a friend, he suggested that I try a whole looped arrangement of Billie Jean. And I'd, I'd never done a, uh, a full looped arrangement of any tune before. So the prospect of this was pretty exciting to me. I went home that night, and I dissected the tune. I learned the bass part and the drum part, and I learned the vocal melody and the harmony, and I had to learn the string part as well. But then I also had to figure out how to layer them, how to play them sequentially, part by part, so by the end of this whole piece, it would be realized. This process was so interesting to me, a puzzle that I was putting together, that it really planted the seed for the singularity concept of mine. So for a while, what I was doing was uh, taking old material, things that I uh, had previously recorded, and I was repurposing it for uh, this concept, learning parts that other musicians had played. But what I didn't have was a tune that was born from the marriage of these two items, the human element and the technology. But that opportunity happened for me last year. Uh, it was during Hurricane Irene. I was supposed to play a gig in New York City, and uh, we got diverted for four days to Burlington, Vermont. And we didn't have anything planned, obviously, because those days were, you know, we didn't have anything to do. We had just had to sit in this hotel room for four days. Well, I don't normally have this gift of time where there's no plans, and I don't play my fiddle nearly as much as I would love to. So what I did is I took my gear through the rain, set up the mobile fiddle lab in my hotel room, and I sat there and I played. And I remembered a melody that I'd shelved a while back, about three years ago, I had written it, and it was just a melody. There was no chord changes, there was no arrangement. So I looped this melody, and then I started to strum my fiddle along with it like a guitar. Or a mandolin, you know, and I, I added the chords to it, to that melody, once I found the ones I liked. And then I thought another section might sound really great with the, with the string part to it, so I, you know, I pressed a couple buttons, I tweaked a couple knobs, I doctored a few settings up, and then I've arrived at this sound for a string section. And then I thought, this other part might sound great with the bass. So I, I tried to find one that fit what I was, the character I was looking for, and I, and I found this sound on the fiddle. On the fiddle. <laughs> and then, I used the back of my hand to get a kick drum sound, and then I slapped the top of the body for more percussive elements. But what I didn't have was a rhythmic foundation to carry throughout this whole piece, tie it all together. And I thought back to when I had actually written this three years ago. It was to the heartbeat of my daughter from before she was born. At the 14-week ultrasound, I went in armed with recording gear to document this experience. First child, never even heard this heartbeat before. Didn't know what to expect. So I took it home, and I created a tiny little loop of what my favorite part was. So I realized what, what really was supposed to be the foundation was this heartbeat. But I had to find a way to recreate it on my instrument. About a year after she was born, I was on a tour with musicians from different parts of Africa. And there was one shaker player, a guy named Mario from Madagascar. And he played rhythms so compelling to me and so infectious to me that I had to find a way to recreate that on my instrument. He was playing the shaker. It was a tin can filled with shards of glass. And it was incredible. But I didn't have the tools or the technique to make these sounds on my instrument, so I had to invent a new Boeing for myself. 
And that Boeing, it turned out, was a great way to emulate my daughter's heartbeat. So after these four days in that hotel room and all these different layers of my life's experience, I came away with a new tune composed of all these different layers. This is my piece, The Heartbeat Kid.
Thank you.